and we want to study biosecurity and, and especially in my discipline, I'm an epidemiologist, so we try to, to make associations and to, to quantify effects of certain. So there's a lot of, I think everybody's agreeing biosecurity is important, but if we want to study it and we want to look at the relationship between biosecurity and, and improved production or relationship between biosecurity and uh, reduction of risk of disease introduction or even reduction of antimicrobial usage, we need to be able to quantify these relationships. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me on this week's episode is Dr. Ewan DeWolf. Now, Dr. DeWolf is a professor and the department chair at the Veterinary School at Ghent University in Belgium. Dr. Yeun, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for coming back on. Really appreciate it. And uh, why don't you give an introduction for the audience, maybe in case somebody didn't see our first episode together. Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me. And it's really enjoyable to be back here. So as you said, I'm a, I'm a professor at Ghent University in Belgium. Uh, I'm a veterinarian by training and I, uh, I, I worked on swine diseases and epidemiology of swine diseases uh, for many years uh, Long ago, I made my PhD on the control of, of classical swine fever. Uh, and that was actually also the spark of my interest into the biosecurity story because we, I studied a lot of huge outbreaks in the, uh, the end of the previous century, actually, in, in Europe, and, and where we saw already that biosecurity uh, was an important player uh, in, in avoiding or not uh, being able to avoid uh, a, a breakdowns in farms. So that's where I got interested in the whole story of prevention uh, and, and true biosecurity preventing uh, disease outbreaks. Curious to discover if you can manage your animal data and teams work with the touch of a finger? Some of the best and largest pig farm holdings worldwide use cloud farms to collect and analyze data like never before. How? With the most advanced mobile app to collect data accurately and super fast. For breeding, farrowing, weaning, and finishing, also, this is the easiest way to assign tasks to your team and motivate to work more efficiently. You instantly understand what gets done on time and what doesn't. So yes, you can manage your animal data with the touch of a finger. Well, I know you spent a lot of time working on biosecurity and we're gonna to talk today about quantifying biosecurity, how to make it something that is pretty subjective, objective. So, um, Yeun, why don't you talk to us about the current project you've been working on to quantify biosecurity on pig farms? Well, exactly as you say, when, when we want to study biosecurity and, and especially in my discipline, I'm an epidemiologist, so we try to, to make associations and to, to quantify effects of certain. So there's a lot of, I think everybody's agreeing biosecurity is important. But if we want to study it and we want to look at the relationship between biosecurity and, and improved production or relationship between biosecurity and uh, reduction of risk of disease introduction or even reduction of antimicrobial usage, we need to be able to quantify these relationships. And to, to be able to quantify, we came up, we, we need to be able to measure it. And that's why we developed in my research group a measurement system. And basically it is a, it is a questionnaire. But behind the questionnaire, there is a quite um, quite complex algorithm that translates the answers you give on the questions into scores. And this translation is done based on the importance of each of the individual um, biosecurity measures. And that, again, is based on, on our knowledge uh, with regard to transmission routes of specific uh, diseases, uh, pig diseases. So nowadays that uh, we have this system, we have it for pigs. We also developed it later on for other animal species, but the, the first one was on pigs. So nowadays we really can go to farm, fill in the questionnaire based upon the observations we make in the farm with regard to a number of infrastructural components related to biosecurity, but also about behavioral of, of, of the farmer, of the farm workers, or what are you doing in this case, what are you doing in another case. We translate the answers on these questions, if we put them into the questionnaire, the questionnaire translate that in a scoring system. And this whole process, that's that's what we call the biocheck.uganta, obviously it's developed in Kent University and that's why uh, that's the name, it is a fully 
freely available too. Eh? So it is online available. If you just Google biocheck.ugenta, you'll easily find it. And there you can go into the system and start filling in this uh, survey, and it will translate that into a quantitative report for you. It will not only give you an overall number, it does, right? so it will give you an overall score, something between 0 and 100, and 0 that's quite unlikely, would mean that you do nothing uh, with regard to biosecurity. 100 is equally unlikely because that means that you do everything perfect uh, with regard to a biosecurity measure. So, so typically we are somewhere in between in that range. Uh, and there we say that, uh, but the score is then further subdivided into subcategories. Uh, and these subcategories are specifically to measures for external biosecurity, measures for internal biosecurity. And the advantage of that is that, first of all, when you evaluate biosecurity, it is a kind of tool that helps you to avoid that you miss on important components. Sometimes you're triggered, you see, you go to a farm, you see a number of, of weaknesses, you're triggered to jump into those areas and you forget about the number of important other components. So, so that's why we do like the full overview. Yeah? And while filling in the questionnaire, it will avoid that you forget on some, some components. Secondly, when looking at the report, it gives you a, a quantitative strength and weaknesses analysis. Yeah? Some parts will be good, will have high scores. Other parts will be relatively uh, poor, uh, where we have lower scores. And that immediately uh, gives you also a starting point to talk about how can we translate that into an action point. And that is, of course, where a veterinarian, the farm advisor, comes into the story because it's the, if that is the, the most uh, qualified person to translate that audit into, into an action plan. Uh, because sometimes I see people using the, 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 the biocheck as, as an audit and then it stops when they have the report. Uh, but actually what, what I try to con, uh, convince people about it is it only starts there. Right? When you have the report, that's really the first step. And from then onwards, you translate that into an action plan. And also there, it's important that you do that in, in a dialogue with, with your client. Um, and that you do not overload um, uh, uh, the action plan. And because often what we see is you fill in the bio check, a typical result would be something like 60%, 65%, or whatever. Um, but there is plenty of things you can improve. Right? And you, you see it in the system, we'll, we'll guide you also in what you can improve. But please do not try to improve 20 different components of biosecurity at once. And that's a mistake that is also sometimes made. Uh, and then, then, then it's important that, that you prioritize. And you say, okay, prioritize and at the same time also look at feasibility. Talk to the client and ask what do you think is reasonable and is feasible within this period of time. We go for that and then we say, okay, maybe within six months we come back, we do a re-evaluation and then we can discuss on the next uh, part for improvement. So that's a bit the way we are using the biocheck. Currently it's used in, in many countries throughout the world. So we have uh, over 50,000 records into our database on swine farms only. Uh, so it is, uh, but it's not 50,000 individual farms because increasingly more we see farms coming back uh, that do repeated biochecks uh, once every year, once every six months, whatever, uh, to, 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 to guide them in that follow-up. Uh, but it is really used uh, at many places. Uh, and, and, and the fact that it has been used so much gives another added value because every time it's used, we can... Uh, keep that data with us, uh, we can collect that data, and we use the data to provide you with benchmarks. Yeah? Uh, so whenever you fill it in, you'll, you'll get, uh, uh, co um, you can compare the result of that specific farm with the world uh, wide average. But if you have sufficient data records within a specific country, it is also compared to country average. And, and that gives you, of course, a better insight in, because the numbers as such are not extremely valuable, but whenever you compare your own result over time, eh, that is also a very good way of working. And you start at a certain level and then you see I can improve, but you can also compare it with your colleagues eh, and see, okay, apparently my colleagues do much better on this and this component. There must be something I'm not, uh, I haven't covered yet and I have to improve. Yeah. 
That's outstanding. Um, you know, I really like the fact that you not only get a tool to assess your farm, but you get the benchmarking opportunity to compare it to other farms. Um, do you have uh, any, um, you know, uh, suggestion or um, I guess background on uh, the quantification of the questions? So uh, each each item has a score associated with it. Could you talk briefly, uh, Yeun, on? How did you get the number for each question initially? And then do you guys look at that and update that over time? Yeah, it's a very, very good point. And it's, it, it's extremely important because the scoring system is actually the, the, uh, the, the, the heart of the system. So how do we determine uh, the, the weights of those scores? That is always done in collaboration with a group of experts, an international group of experts, where we will ask questions uh, with regard to different... But first, we always start with a, with a literature study uh, on what are the important transmission routes for the important pig diseases. Uh, um, and you can always... So whenever we, we start discussing the exact values, we always have a lot of discussion because some one expert is thinking about... Um, Mycoplasma, the other expert is thinking about purse, and the, the fourth one is thinking about another disease and, and African swine fever and so on. So what we do is we, we include a quite large group of experts, and then we go to we, we average their weights eh, to come to, to, an, to an average weight. But again, we also update it. And so very soon, actually, by the end of uh, this month, beginning of, of next month, we will have a, a third uh, update of our biocheck pick. So we will get a new version online. We, we do not do that too frequently because for those people that are using the system over time, it's a, it's a bit, uh, yeah, the, the scores will differ a little bit because some questions have differed and some weights have differed. Uh, but 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 from time to time it's really needed and and so now a big update will come up uh, very soon and that is of course also always related to yeah new new insights that we get into biosecurity because it is an area in which a lot of research is has been uh, uh, produced uh, and, and we really want to take into account the new insights uh, that that are generated uh, and translate them into an, a continuously better scoring system Outstanding. Biosecurity is important all over the world, and it gets more important every day, whether we like it or not. And this is a tremendous tool that represents expert consensus, right? The average of multiple experts on which are the most important points. And it's a tool any producer can use anywhere in the world to instantly benchmark. You know, basically, it's like having all those experts come to your farm and say, what are your biggest opportunities to improve? Tremendous use of, of both uh, uh, the uh, the technical abilities and the technology to help transfer this information all over the world. It's great information. And um, Yeun, I can't thank you enough for coming on the podcast and sharing that with our audience. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Well, it's a real pleasure for me, and uh, I hope uh, our tool can be useful also for uh, for your audiences. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to see uh, many people. And moreover, I haven't mentioned that, but you can use it totally anonymous, anonymously, and so you don't have to be afraid that that your specific farm data get shared with others. That that's not the case. Uh, so you don't have to fill in any address or whatever. Uh, so uh, so yeah, I hope uh, it can be useful and it can be helpful to improve uh, pig health uh, throughout the world. Well, it'll be useful if our audience puts it to use, Yeun. Um, you know, just like you said, an, an audit only has value if it turns into a plan, which turns into execution. And I would encourage the audience out there listening to this podcast. This podcast only has value if you turn this into a plan that turns into action. So if you haven't visited BioCheck uh, UGent, please Google that. Go find that website. Check the tool out. See the scoring system. Um, and if you think it uh, is, a, is a value to you, start using it on your farms. Um, I think it's a, a very useful piece of information. And uh, for our audience listening out there, number one, thanks for being a part of this. But number two, you've got a homework assignment, uh, not just to like and subscribe to the podcast, but go check out the website, put it to use on your farm. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. 
If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H E L L O at W I S E N E T I X dot com. Um.